Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the Brute Active Directory box from CyberSec Labs. The difficulty is 3 out of 10 and let's jump into it. So we start off with our nmap scan and this is an Active Directory box and the nmap scan shows that we have DNS open, we have Kerberos open here, we have RPC, um, we also have SMB on these ports. Um, and then a whole bunch more ports. Uh, we also notice that we have uh, a script here that's gonna run on RDP and it's gonna tell us the domain name, which is brute.csl. Uh, we also have WinRM open here on port 5985. Um, but this is all very basic for uh, Active Directory. So how do you start with this? Where do you start? Well, I really like this uh, Active Directory methodology from Hectrix uh, and uh, it goes over some great stuff that you can try. So you can search down here for individual ports or just follow this. Um, and one of the things it tells us to do is to enumerate users. This is something that I do after I do all of this other enumeration. Um, but this came up empty for me, so I started to enumerate users. Now, usually I enumerate users with the SREP roasting script, um, but this time I wanted to try this nmap script here. So let's go over that. So we're going to copy this and take a look at that. So we're going to run this Kerberos enum user script. We have to supply the realm, which is the domain name. The domain is toast, uh, no, brute. Uh, and then we have to supply a usernames.txt. Uh, file. So for our usernames, let's take a look at some files here. So let's go to user, share, word lists, and then I have my sec lists here, which contains some usernames. So let's see, we have, uh, let's go into names, because in uh, Active Directory, we, we often have names um, as, as the usernames in Active Directory, so we can decide family names, female names, male names, or just names.txt. Let's see what names.txt has. So that just has names, and I think that'll be fine in this case uh, to start with. If that wouldn't find anything, what we could do is uh, try different combinations. And also in Hectrix here, we have common combinations in uh, Active Directory, our name, surname, name, dot, surname, uh, first letter of name, surname, stuff like that. So that's all stuff that you can try to enumerate usernames, and in a in a a real life setting you would do a lot of brute forcing for usernames you could uh, spend a lot of time on there but let's hope for this box that we can just use this names.txt file so we're going to copy that file paste it in here and change the ip to 127.31.3.3 and that's going to run now that's going to take a while to run so i have already ran it and I have the results here. So I ran it and it found two, uh, four names. It found Darlene, Tess, Malcolm, and Patrick. So I put them in a users file here. So now once we have user usernames, well, let's go back to Hacktricks to see what it tells us to do. It says, okay, we can try SREP roasting. Now, if you don't know what that is, I went oh, in, in more detail on it in my Toast video. Uh, so check that out if you like. Um, but for this video, we're just going to run the script. So what is the script? We're going to run get np users from impacket. We're going to supply a user users file, and we're going to supply the DC IP, which is the IP of the box. Then we're going to supply a output file, and then our IP address. Uh, and oh, we want to give this a name, so let's call this srep hash. 3.3. Okay, so that's going to try for each user. It's going to check if a certain attribute is set, and if that attribute is set for that user, that means it doesn't have to pre-authenticate with the Kerberos, uh, with Kerberos. So uh, we will be able to get a, the hash from a message there. So this script is running. Uh, also on Hectrix, you can get a lot more information on SREP roasting. Uh, I really rec recommend looking into that if you're not exactly sure what is happening here. Uh, the domain should be specified. Okay, yeah, I made a mistake here because at the end we don't need to have our IP here. We need to have our domain. 
and our domain here is brute.csl. So you can run that. Okay, and we noticed that the user Darlene doesn't have it set, user Malcolm doesn't have it set, Patrick doesn't have it set, but it didn't mention, mention tests. And that's because now in our strap hash file we have a hash for tests. Now this hash we can try to brute force it, crack it with John. So let's do John dash dash word list equals, and I'm going to copy the URL here to my rock queue, and then srep hash. And that's going to go, go really fast because these are MD4 hashes, and we can see, okay, the password is unique1. Now we have a, a username and a password. So what can we try now? We can try logging into SMB, we can try logging into WinRM, to uh, RDP, to LDAP. Uh, so that, that, that's all stuff you can try. Let's, uh, you can use crackmap exec to try WinRM, for example. If you're looking for other ways, to other uh, things that you should try, such as LDAP or um, SMB, check my website linked below that shows uh, more types uh, or that, that shows multiple ways where I've solved boxes by trying different stuff. So we're going to run crackmap crack map exec on WinRM for tests with the password unique one. And let's see if that comes up with anything. Uh, it doesn't show any output and this is an error that I have, a bug that I have with uh, crapmac exec, but by adding another, uh, ad any other parameter here, any other thing here, it works. So that's beautiful. And we see that, yes, we have pawned this user because that was a valid login for WinRM. Once we have a valid login, we can use evil WinRM dash i for the IP address, uh, and then dash u for tests, and dash password unique one. So now we're going to log in with Eve with, over WinRM, and we're going to see that we get a PowerShell uh, session as this user. So who are we? We are currently tests. So now you can start your enumeration, you can run Seedbelt, WinPiece, uh, all of those things, you can run um, Bloodhound. And one of the things you will run as well is who am I slash all. And in here, you will notice that for all these groups, we have this interesting group here, the DNS admins group. Now this group, once you see it, you should uh, immediately have a, have a bell in your head that goes off. Because if we Google DNS admins privilege escalation, we instantly find this article here. that says from DNS admins to system uh, to domain compromise. So how does this work? Well, this works by building a DLL ourselves, and we are going to set this DLL as the server level plugin for uh, DNS. So when we then, when the DNS service is started or restarted, uh, it's going to run our DLL as system. Now, why can we set the server level plugin DLL? Well, we are the DNS admin, and we can use this DNS command, uh, commandlet in Windows. That's going to uh, that that has a utility for for changing stuff in the DNS. And we can use that to set our plugin DLL. But of course, first we need to get make our own DLL. Now, how are we going to do this? Uh, in here, it has an example. For example, here, um, and I'm going to start off with this DNS exe persistence. Um, repository. So I cloned this repository on my Windows machine and I opened it in uh, Visual Studio. Now in Visual Studio we can see we have these files, we have this DLL main file, we have this uh, win32 project1.cpp, C++, uh, and in here in our DNS plugin API as seen in the screenshot from this page, we are going to put our code that we are going to run. So in, in the screenshot, they run a file that then contain, contains the command. But in our case, what I did is I just ran uh, netcat.exe, which we have to upload to the box still, with my IP address, my port, and then dash e cmd.exe. So that's what I'm going to run. So then I set it to release and build this project and move the file over to my VM here. So now here I have this DLL. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to upload netcat.exe. Uh, it's not here, netcat.exe is in my slash mount slash pink 
we can upload that. And then I always like to verify that netcat is actually working. So let's quickly get a listener here and uh, see if we can get netcat working because I've noticed a lot of people having errors with netcat uh, and it's because they have a netcat version that doesn't work, that doesn't run. Um, so make sure you have a correct netcat version and we see, okay, this works fine. So that's great. Uh, so now we can upload our DLL to the box, upload that, okay, and now we can test our DLL as well. Uh, we can test if it works with run DLL 32, uh, we can say our name and then that function that we that made or that we have here, the DNS plugin initialize. So we supply that here. And we see, okay, this DLL works fine. So it, we are ready to have it uh, set for the uh, plugin of the DNS service, the server level plugin. So I'm just gonna copy this command here and then we have to change it a bit because I don't want to run it on any other computer. I want to run it on this computer. Um, okay. And I don't want to get it from a SMB share. I just want to get it from the local drive here. So let's paste that here and try setting that. And we see, okay, the command completed successfully. So now all we have to do is either uh, restart the DNS service ourselves or wait for it to be restart restarted. Now in a real life scenario, it's not going to happen often that you are a DNS admin and that you can also restart the service. So in that case, you would have to set this plugin uh, make sure that it works, which is why we ran it before here and uh, we tried netcat as well just to really make sure that it works and then just wait for it to be restarted. However, in lab envir environments, often we do have the permissions to restart it ourselves. So we can do that with sc.exe and then stop DNS and start DNS. So let's do just that. So we're first going to stop the DNS server uh, service. So it's stopped now and now we have to listen on our port and then start the DNS service. And we will notice that we get our shell back. And we are now currently system. And that's perfect. Now, why did I make my own D, uh, DLL here? And why did I not just use MSF Venom or something like that? That's because when you do that, uh, the DNS service will crash. In this case, if I query DNS, we will notice that it's just running. So it hasn't crashed. And in a real life environment, when uh, you don't want the blue team to find out what you're doing, you obviously don't want to have DNS servers crashing because that would uh, cause a lot of issues and, and would uh, make yourself known and you wouldn't want that. So that's why I would always uh, try to write your own uh, DLL or make a really simple one. And as you saw, it was very simple for me. I had this repository and just added one line. And that's all that I had to do. But that was pretty much it for this box. I think this was a very educative, educative box. Is that how you pronounce it? Mm. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll hope to see you back for another video. Take care. Goodbye.